Welcome to Uncluttered and Unfiltered, the podcast urging you to let it go and don't look back with nationally acclaimed professional organizer, Christine Stone, and self-proclaimed hot damn mess radio and TV personality, Eden Kindle. Welcome, everybody, to Uncluttered and Unfiltered. I'm Eden Kendall, a broadcaster of many years. Christine Stone, professional organizer of Neatly Designed, is with me as well, as always. And this is our Mother's Day episode. Now, Mother's Day isn't coming up in days as of us recording this. It's a little over a week away, but it is never too early to start thinking about mom. And it's Never. never a bad time to reminisce as moms, about Mother's Days that have come before. But can I do a a Mother's Day brag? Yes. So the girl child, Chloe, is 22 years old, and she will be graduating this coming Friday from Florida State University with a double major in psychology and, and family sciences. Wow. But here's what's so great. And she's not sure furthering her education what comes next. And she is entitled to that. She's definitely doing a gap year education wise. She has taken a teaching job at the same preschool that she and her brother attended. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that so sweet? That's so sweet. So she will be teaching the little ones. She loves the little, little littles. So that's going to be fun. Well, I saw on your Facebook, the um, blink and they'll be grown up. And then you showed pictures of her when she was younger almost made me cry. Um, And it's so true. I mean, you blink and you see that little toddler running around and then they're grown up, graduated college, married, have kids. It's just so bizarre and amazing at the same time. You just, I was with my daughter this weekend who had the baby and he is getting so big and just seeing her be a mom is just blowing my mind. It really is. I mean, I just, I, I envisioned it, but to see it in reality is amazing. I love every minute of it. Now, this will be her first Mother's Day. Yes. How are we approaching that? Does dad have that well in hand? Did you mention anything? I know he does, I'm sure, but. Well. And will you be doing anything special for her? I mean, she's not your mom, but she is a mom but now. You know what? I th- he, she is married to the greatest guy in the whole wide world, so I'm sure he's got something planned. But that brings me back to when you had infants and toddlers and babies. For me, my husband would always say, "What do you want for Mother's Day? What can I do?" And I'm like, "Can I just sleep in a six hour block? Take them somewhere, stroll them around for you know. I just wanted to catch up on my sleep. I didn't need like a material gift. I was always a walking zombie, and so I think doing something sweet like that, where you you know you sleep in, take a nap, do what you need to do, catch up on yourself, go get your hair done. When your kids are younger, it's different. When your kids are old and up and out, it's like no one really even celebrates it other than your children to you. But I remember when my kids were young, I just, every time he'd ask, I go, I just need to sleep. Well, there's a, there's a pivot that happens and it's between when they're very needy and when they do not act like they need you at all, where you go from wanting the day to yourself and then you're like, okay, you need to spend the day with me for mother's day because I'm not going to get you any other time. Like, so for me, Over the past several years, I've always asked for the same gift, and I've yet to receive it, by the way. And it is, I want one of those redos on an old photo. I would love to see the kids, whether they were hugging on each other or there's one where he's trying to pour sand over her head. I would like them to go remake that exact photo for me as adults. And I ask for that every year, and I think they think I'm kidding, or maybe it just gets lost in translation. I'm not sure. I couldn't be any more public than I'm being about it right now. But these are the kind of things where I'll say like, hey, let's all go to dinner together or a movie together. And that's my Mother's Day, just the mere presence of having everybody all together at one time versus back in the day when they were so small. And I thought, it sounds counterproductive, but I'd like to not be with you (laughs) like mom on Mother's Day. And I used to kind of judge that to be honest I, I did too I, I thought felt that guilty. sounded terrible you know it's like it's Mother's Day when they're toddlers you should want to be with them I'm like god I just want to break but you're right when you're an empty nester 
I miss my girls on Mother's Day. They don't live here. And I mean, it's a different, every phase of life, like you said, when you're a mom is different. So you just kind of have to play it year by year. And when they don't live here, it's even, you know, you're not getting really anything but a card or a phone call because they don't live here. And so time, quality time is really lacking as they get older. And we're going to talk about that even more when our special guest, which I meant to right off the bat tease, we have a very special guest. We won't tell you who it is right now, but a very special guest that is joining us in this episode for Mother's Day. So if you think about that, who might that be that's going to be joining us? And let's talk about from the receiving end. We've already talked about time to do things on your own or experiences that you could have with your kids. But what would be if if somebody came to you and said, what's a great gift to give a mom for Mother's Day once I'm grown? Because I tend to think that look, people listening to this podcast, either your kids are grown and we're talking about your own mother, or maybe you want to suggest something to somebody else. So what's something you would love to receive? I mean, I made a list because they're, they're, Things for this stage of my life, not so much when the kids were younger, but I think a professional photo shoot with your kids, your grandkids, you know, something casual. It can be, it doesn't have to be fancy, but I think those are memories, especially like my mom's 84. So to do something like that with each generation would mean a lot because you just never know, you know, what next year will hold. So I think a professional mini photo session would be a really good gift. I also think if your mom, you know, likes a concert that's coming to her town that she really, really loves them, like Frankie Valley. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not Pitbull? <laughs> not, no, not for me. But anyway, uh, you know, maybe doing something like that where they'd really love to go and listen to some music that they really, mm-hmm. really like. Um, if they go to the hair salon, getting them a hair salon gift card is always a great idea mm-hmm. because sometimes a good blow- blowout can just change your day. So anything mm-hmm. like that for mom. Um, I also think my daughter did this for me. It's called Storybook. What's this? She, she did it for me for Christmas. And the reason why I'm laughing is because what what you do is you pick a year's worth of questions ahead of time and they send you one a week and you answer the questions each week. And at the end of the year, they make a book out of it. <laughs> and I'm what? laughing. Yes, this is the So did fun- she start? give you this or did she start it for you? No, she gave me this with all the questions for a year. Okay. So I get one a week. And at first I thought, what a great, this is the best idea ever. Now it's homework. Now it's homework. (laughs) And also like, do I lie? Do Uh I tell the truth? Who's going to be seeing this? Right. Like who's going to be seeing this? Um, Because the questions aren't surface questions. No, 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 no. Um, like the latest one was, I'm just going to give you an example. Who was your prom date and what did you do? And your answer is. <laughs> I haven't answered it yet. Oh. Uh, no, not that there's anything bad, but I mean, it's like things you have to really go back and start to think. And it's not like one word answers. I mean, you're supposed to write at least, I'd say two or three sentences. So then it starts out where you answer it quickly and then it starts to get into a bigger subject and it's about your childhood about um what do you think love is what's your definition of love oh well goodness. i could write 5 pages on that really i could cuz i'm such a hopeless romantic uh-huh. um so anyway i do think it's great i think it's a little time consuming but if you don't if you have a lot of time on your hands i think it's a great gift for a grandparent I think that would be really interesting, interesting and fascinating because at the end you'll have this book full of information that maybe you never even knew or even can you thought about. Upload asking. pictures to it. You can or? upload pictures. Okay. You can you can add to it. Like I can add something in there mm-hmm. that I may want her to know about me that she didn't ask. So you can add to it as well. 
You know what I think is the most touching thing about that gift is the person who receives it feels like there are people who want to hear their story. Yes. You know, it's very cliche to say, I just want to feel seen and heard, but there's no better way to tell somebody that, yes, I would like to to hear and see you than to give them a gift like that where you're inviting them to give you the stories Right. And passing form. it down. I mean, if yeah. I, if my mother did it, okay. And then I had it and gave it to my daughter, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you can pass it down for generations on information about how your grandmother grew up, you know, how many siblings, you know, she asks everything mm-hmm. about where were you born, you know, from the beginning all the way up. I haven't gotten to the end. We've got like six months to go on questions. But it's a great, great concept. I just, I think when you're going backwards in your life, some things you just would prefer to leave in the past. Like, huh, why don't I remember that? Or I have to really stop. Like I always say, I need to do this in the morning before everyone, like before my husband gets up and really concentrate because when you're going backwards, you have to focus on what you're writing and what you remember. This sounds like a fantastic exercise and not wholly unlike something that we have that we're cooking up for you in the near future. Yes. So I'm going to leave it at that, but just know that if that is an exercise that sounds like fun to you, a couple things. One, it's called Storybook, you said? Story Worth. Story Worth. Yeah. Story Worth. So And we'll link it. We'll link it in in our show notes. That's one thing, but if just the, not necessarily that, but just the idea of having something that's going to make you really go inside yourself and really think about it, stay tuned because over the next few weeks, we are going to be sharing with you a project that we're all going to be doing together. And so so we're very excited about that. What other topics on Mother's Day do we want to make sure we cover before we get to our very special guest? I think the last thing is I need to talk about flowers. I love flowers. I go to Trader Joe's and Whole Foods and get flowers almost every week just because I love flowers. But Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, they're just so overpriced. Mm -hmm. And I just think a beautiful plant, like an orchid, something that can last for a long time, not something that will die in a week. I, I'm I'm a plant person, uh, real plants. As an organizer, I'm big into the the real plant versus here's an, the Here's fake. another little money saving tip somebody shared with me the other day. You know, they have the um, all the shopping app now, the Instacarts, and all the different places that will deliver from a grocery store. You can order plants delivered to somebody's house straight from the grocery store. So that's oh, that's less a great expensive. Idea. You could do a bottle of wine and a plant and their favorite snack. The only problem I have with those. <laughs> those is when you never know, like I'll put something and it'll they get to my house it. and I'm like, what the heck is this? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, the or substitutions. It's either substitutions or they'll pick a tomato that's half rotted. I'm like, what am I going to do with a half rotted tomato? So I'm a little wary, but that's the organizer and me liking to kind of know what I'm, you know what I mean? Knowing what you're getting. Right. The uh, But the convenience the, the is thought, great. The thought that counts person in me, though, is like, hey, you know, if I know that you love these kind of corn chips, this kind of crazy, you know, wine. And well, that's different. Flowers, Alcohol's different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol's different. So, okay. But moving moving on, uh, what else do we want to cover before oh, we I get think, to our special guest? I think guest? that's okay. it. I guess because we're empty nesters. It's it's. You know, it's a little bit different. It's a little Day. bit different when it comes to Mother's Day. You're really the one who gives. You the, know what I the, mean? The ask I have for my kids, and they haven't even heard this yet, but they're um, I want them to come with me to name that tune, which is a local event where you can like listen to music and then you have I to write go. down. That. I know you do, I but it's go. also good to have multi generations oh, at something like that. that. I'm good so, at name the name so that tune. I know. I, well, I can only imagine because you and I have that whole seventies thing going. I know. And then I also think eighties because that's like yeah, high that's, school and all this. Yeah, and that's then, high school and, and college. Then I found out because I did drag them to it once for I think it was my birthday, I made them go. And I found out that my son is really good at all of the hip hop from the 90s on. And my daughter is really good at all of the more and more current stuff. So that's where I feel like, you know, we well, can when come together pe- as a family. And if you're doing trivia, you got to have you got to have a mix of people or else you, you lose. You do. You know what I mean? You, everybody has to know what they know from their decade. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Speaking of 
They're decades. You mentioned earlier that your mom is 84 years old. Yes. And her name is Betty. Yes. And she is our guest for Yay! our Mother's Day episode. Hello, Betty. Well, first of all, happy Mother's Day in advance. Well, thank you very much. And thank you so much for agreeing to be on our podcast. What do you think about your daughter being a podcaster? Well, I'm enjoying it a lot. It's almost like, and I think I mentioned this to Chris, I'm in a restaurant and I'm sitting next to a table that's having an interesting conversation and I'm eavesdropping and loving it. Oh, Mom. That's, that's so, so nice. sweet. So I know, I know Chris has some things she wants to talk to you about, but I, I have a few questions myself. Sure. So what does Chris, which characteristics does Chris get from you? She is so ultra organized. <laughs> is that something she learned from you or do you constantly ask yourself where she got that from? <laughs> if you ask her, she'll say no. <laughs> uh, Chris was always neat. I could go into her room, unlike her brother's rooms, and she was she always put things away after herself. She always did. Even her bathroom was neat. So I'd have to say it's just something that she always was. She just was like that and she raised her girls the same way by showing them that you need to pick up after yourself and she did a good job of it. Okay. And then my next question is how are you feeling as a great grandmother? I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing you. <laughs> how is it how are you enjoying being a great grandmother? Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. It was exciting being a grandmother years ago, but this is it's over the top. It's hard to explain it to anyone. You can't explain it. I've already made him a superhero in my neighborhood. It's 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 just <laughs> overwhelming and it's wonderful. Well, congratulations. Now, I know Christine has some things she wants to bring up to you while we are so honored to have you on the line, Betty. Okay, Mom. I'm going to yeah, do honey. a few mom-isms. A mom-ism? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. And these are some things that you always said the whole time I was growing up that has stuck in my brain. And even oh. Eden said, there's another trinket from your mother. So the first one is never be jealous of others because you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Can you okay. make that a little bit more broad there, Mom? Oh. <laughs> well, you just don't know what's going on in other people's lives. I, I, it's hard to explain that to anyone either. You learn that as you get older. And I think you know that. Everybody has issues and problems, and they keep it to themselves. And you only see the happy side of them when they're, when they're out with you or enjoying life. That's it sure, so true. It makes it, it makes it hard to not take things personally when you, when you don't know. But if you assume that not everything is personal, everybody's happier in that scenario. Yep. Yep, I agree. What else do you have there? Uh, enjoy the age you are because you will look at photos one day or a few years back and go, God, I looked good. You remember that, Mom? Uh, no. Yes. <laughs> you, you constantly said you need to enjoy the stage of life that you're at physically because you'll constantly be looking back at photos and go, why didn't I think I looked amazing then? Because well, that part I do remember. Yes. Because I never liked when you beautiful young girls were always saying, oh, I look terrible in that, or oh, my hair isn't perfect, or I hate my lipstick, or my eyes, I like so-and-so's eyebrows better. And it, it's, it, I look at your picture, or any of you young girls, and think, you're all perfect. You're beautiful. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the day. Enjoy the year that you are at. That's right. And, and I try. You, yeah. And when you say young girls, 56 and 60, you mean us, right? Those are young, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I look at pictures of myself when I was 60 and I think, oh, I was young then. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And you are. You are. I don't look at anybody through age as years it's the persona that you carry with you as you age and i think you girls are all beautiful at every age 
And I think I knew that when I was younger, but I didn't appreciate it. Oh, Mom. We always look for flaws in ourselves and perfection in someone else. And, you know, I understand it now, and it's normal, nothing wrong with it, but it's hard to shake that. Yep, that's for sure. Okay, and the last one, Mom, it's not how many friends you have, but the quality of the friendships. Yes. Very important. Um, I think you know that. Yes. I still have friends I went to high school with that I talk to on a regular basis. And, of course, before we didn't have social media, but now we can contact each other all the time. We exchange pictures and thoughts and, I hate to say it, but keep up with obituaries of those we lost and share memories about them. And... I don't have a million friends. I have a lot of acquaintances whose company I really enjoy, but I enjoy my friends who have been with me truly a lifetime. And maybe I can only count them on one hand, but they, they're they in the palm of my hand, and I enjoy every one of them. Oh, Mom, that's so, so nice. So what, what I love in a lifelong friend is that feeling where – If time does go by and one or the other of you lets that happen, you can pick things up exactly where you left off and nobody's going to hold the other one's foot to the fire and say, why haven't you called? Or you're just happy to catch up. And I think the friends that I've had the longest are the ones where there's no judgment. If, you know, whenever we get back together again, it's like no time has passed. Exactly. That's exactly the way it feels. And you'll know that throughout your life. Um, I have friends that I've met in each stage of my life while we were, before I was married, uh, during our young married years when we were raising our children together. Um, Now I get pictures of their children and great-grandchildren. And each stage that we've gone through together, it's like it's continuing. It doesn't end. It, It just goes on, and it's It's so meaningful. Well, Betty, what what I got to tell you is if you were at the restaurant where we were eating and you sat (laughs) down with us, I know that the tables all around us would be leaning in closely to hear that conversation and they would come away from it feeling great. So thank you so much for joining us. Mom, I have one other question. Yeah, honey. Who was your favorite? Oh. Of my three children? Absolutely. Yes. Who was your favorite? Now's your time. Speak or forever hold your peace. I'll be very honest with you. I don't know a mother anywhere that has a favorite. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, no. No, (laughs) you don't have a favorite. You have a moment when you say, she's special, he's special. I remember when. But you never say, I had a favorite, because it isn't true. You know that now, don't you? We'll talk later. We'll talk off the air. You could say she's your favorite daughter. <laughs> yeah, you could say I'm your favorite daughter. Well, I always said she's <laughs> the best daughter I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, girls. Enjoy your show and enjoy doing it. Thank you. It's a you. good time in your life. Oh, thank you, Betty. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. That bye. was a treat. Oh. I I can I can hear. Her in you now that I've heard her. Oh, uh, really? Yes. And, yeah. I, and that's a compliment, by the way. Yes. She's very eloquent and has some really she is great. important thoughts and deep thoughts. Great advice. She was a great mom growing up for a girl. And now she's a great grandmother, great. literally. A great grandmother. So that was very, very sweet. Well, for all that are listening, whether you are a mom or you have fur babies, you're still a mom to us. Yes. Whoever you are and wherever you are, we wish you the happiest of holidays. And please do us a favor. All the things that we always ask, like leaving five stars, it matters. It helps other people find us. If you can leave a review, if you can share, just maybe even drop drop a Drop a post on one of your social media saying that you listened to us and that you invite your friends that are 50 and over to do the same. And then the final thing is that... The Facebook group, ladies Thank you very much because you saw my... This is what just happened. (laughs) I wish you could have seen it. My eyes are going back and forth like there's one more thing and it's the most important thing. There's one more thing. We read each other. And it is. It's the Facebook (laughs) ladies only page. And 
Every single episode that drops, we get more people yes. in there and we love it. And I love reading everything they everything. say. Everything. So fun. So anyway, until then, remember in all things you can, let it go. And don't look back.